Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over the post equalizer in Ozone 7. It is exactly the same as uh, this equalizer here, but let's assume that it is used up right about here and you don't have access to it. Well, you have a post equalizer. And what that does is that is a utility equalizer to prepare your signal chain to be driven into the maximizer. Uh, it's right before the end stage and uh, it's very useful. And I'll show you kind of, you know, what you would do using uh, the post EQ after, you know, you use uh, a bunch of these uh, modules. So you want to drop that in here. And uh, there is a secret mode. Not so much of a secret, but there's another mode in the EQ. Conventionally, um, using the EQ this way, the uh, stereo mode, it's basically just it affects the left and the right and the mid and the side. The left and the right, you can switch to left mode or, and uh, right mode. So it basically splits these up into two EQs. Um, one affecting the left channel and one affecting the right channel. Uh, that has a use if you have like a skewed kind of weird balance that you want to uh, rectify. Um, and that's all well and good. But one of the coolest uses of uh, uh, an EQ is the mid-side mode. And this used to be really kind of expensive to do back in the day. You'd need like an encoder. And what it does is the mid which is the mode that's selected right now. The mid is they take the left and the right, and they take what is the same in the left and the right, and it is the mid uh, signal. And then they take what is different from the left and the right, and that is the side. So I'll, uh, I'll just I'll kind of add a low pass here to the mid. So what you're hearing now a lot of it is the side material, right? That's because we're we're high passing all of the mid data. Now, this is these are two EQs. So I'm going to go over to the side and add a high pass, and I'm going to sweep and get rid of all the side material. And now we're left with a mono signal. We're left with like, you know, the the. When you take the left and the right, whatever is the same is now the mid. So if you take away all the side, you're left with just the mid, kind of blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so yeah, it's really kind of awesome and useful. I'm going to drop that back in. So what you do for the post EQ to kind of prepare it to be fed into um, a limiter and your maximizer for like the final stage and dithering is you want to do some filtering. And uh, yeah, let's go back to our mid-side mode. We can solo the mid, which I, which I should have done to show you. And we can solo the side. Kind of cool. So yeah, we're going to work in our mid kind of area here, and we're going to high pass. We're going to high pass, and uh, I want to kind of make it 48 dB per octave, maybe yeah, maybe 24. And uh, usual, usually uh, conventional wisdom is a 30 hertz high pass. So the frequency from 20 hertz to 30 hertz is rolled off. And uh, you can you know you can use a more of an extreme slope. Why not? And uh, that kind of cleans up the low end, gets rid of a lot of the the base energy that's not quite uh, useful and uh, there you have it and that is the mid mode so on the side which I'm going to select now I get an, an entirely new EQ um, but I can still you know go to the mid but I'm in the side now uh, I'm gonna add a high pass but I'm gonna have it uh, more of a gentler roll off and have it about I don't know 200 let's see Right, so what that's doing is, uh, I mentioned this in my previous uh, tutorial, um, that you really shouldn't have stereo material on the low end. 
to try to get rid of as much as uh, you can. And what that does is that it cleans up any kind of mono compatibility issues that you might have. It's way more obvious on the low end because of the lengths of the wavelengths. They're wider, so when you get phase cancellation, it just sounds just sounds gross. And uh, this is a way to yeah, just, this is just how it's done. Uh, you can also use a low shelf, which is a bit more gentle. Um, but yeah, it's up to you. So we have a harsh cut on the mid, and then on the side we're high passing. We can hear that. And uh, the mid is not as, you know, the mid is still there. And that's where the energy is. The energy is in the mono uh, component of uh, of your material. So let's, uh, let's um, continue a bit more. Let's take a listen to the side. If we want to enhance the side material, the stereo material, we can gently um, play around and uh, boost around here. Again, you want to make sure you check the phase uh, uh, correlation so you can add uh, an imager from your uh, VST list. Um, Insight, I believe it's called, to check your correlation, but you can increase the side material, the stereo. And uh, conversely, you can uh, decrease the mid a little bit. See, there's a little, there's a little guy there. Right, you don't want to do it too much. Less is more, and it's all about you're you're going to be cutting with your EQ more than boosting. They say that production is reduction, so. Be wary of boosting a little too much. Um, ideally, yeah, maybe I shouldn't take away that much. Maybe I should just do that. It's all about getting a balance. And uh, please, you know, have a reference track loaded in while you're doing this, and then you can kind of see what they do. You can even split it up. Uh, do cool things like split up the band and solo each band of your reference track and uh, match it that way. It's, uh, it's actually uh, a very educational uh, experience to do that. Um, and yeah, that's basically the uh, post-EQ uh, mid-side mode. Um, it's just the final little surgical things that you do to prepare your, uh, your audio material for uh, the limiter and the maximizer, which are, you know, usually the last in the chain and uh yeah um hope you learn stuff uh take care and have a good one